Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you're a regular, you're gonna know that this is probably a frustrating video for me, because there's a game engine out there that both entices me and enrages me all at the same time, and it is called O3DE. And the question is, is it going to entice me, or is it going to enrage me now that they just released O3DE 23.10? Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna do both. So this is an open-source game engine. It was originally uh, a fork of CryEngine uh, that Amazon paid a bunch of money for, like 200 plus million dollars. Uh, I think it was CryEngine 3. Point four. Uh, they got the full source code, the rights to it, but since then they completely rewrote it. So they've got a new renderer, a new editor. It's basically a new game engine. It was called Lumberyard, and then it was uh, basically spun off as an open source project managed by the Linux Foundation, now called O3DE. Now the enticing thing about O3DE is there's a lot of industry support behind it. So if we go to the webpage, we scroll on down to the bottom here, you're going to get an idea of some of the companies behind it. So again, we got obviously Amazon, Intel, Microsoft, Audio Kinetic, um, Oppo, it goes on and on. There's a number of companies that uh, actually supported this one, including, interestingly enough, Epic Games. So there is a ton of industry support behind O3DE, and it has the potential to become the next big AAA open source game engine. And along the way, there was a lot of... Um, a lot of work that was done as O3DE. So it, you can almost think of O3D as a completely separate engine from Lumberyard. And we just got a brand new update uh, called O3DE 23.10. Now reading the release notes here, first off, I have an uh oh Scooby moment right away when I jump in here because the first thing that they talk about, uh, well, they talk about some developer conferences going on, but the big thing that they're talking about here is robotics developers. And I guess if you're a robot developer, this is good news. If you're a game developer, having the release notes and the marquee start off with robotic stuff probably doesn't make you feel that excited. Because on top of that, there's actually some really exciting and new features in the 23.10 release. And I'm going to show you those in just a second. Well, I'm going to show you how they don't work, to be honest. But... I want to start things off instead with this quote, which I'm sure none of you are going to take any offense to. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is at the bottom of the release notes for this guy. Uh, O3DE is an open ecosystem that a lot of major players are contributing to. It is the only really open game engine out there, and it is the only fully open source, royalty-free solution that exists at this time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that n n none of you have any disagreement at all with that statement, right? That that statement is 100% truthful. It is the only open game engine out there and is the only fully open source royalty-free solution right now, right? Right? I, I don't know if there's any way they could do, do wrong on that comment. Like, it's just... I can't believe that's in there. It is so easily proven as absolutely and utterly wrong, which just strikes me as kind of insane. Now, I'm not going to really focus on the... Um, the robotics side of things. This is a game development channel, and I don't really care about robotics. If you do, hey, good news. There's some new robotics feature in O3DE. Now, what I'm going to show you is what is potentially the most exciting feature uh, that ironically doesn't work. So here we are. Uh, this is O3DE. It's got a completely new editor, which is quite nice. Uh, it is... Um, it's, it's actually a pretty beautiful thing to work with. These are some models. I actually imported them from the ongoing Cinti uh, Humble Bundle, and they're perfect to illustrate one of the new features that should be super exciting in this release, and that is um, you now have the ability to do instances of prefab. So you can actually tweak an individual value. Uh, on top of that, there's a number of other things to be aware of. If you've never used O3DE before, it's a traditional component-based system. So at the core, anything you add into the world is um, basically just got a transform component, and then you can add other components to it. You've got most of the components you could ever imagine in here. Uh, physics is integrated in here. You've got two methods of scripting on top of C++. You've got a Lua script and then a visual scripting language called Script Canvas. Uh, and yeah, component-based game engine, you, you'll be quite comfortable with it if you've used any other component-based game engine. Now, one of the big things that you do in the world of game development is create prefabs. These are reusable versions of um, stuff. So here you can see this, this model that I brought in. It's built up of a mesh component, a material component, a transform component, and so on. But what you often want to do with prefabs is make small tweaks to each one. So for example, this guy right here, I could potentially come into it and say, oh, I want to change out the material on it. So I want to have a black car and a blue car. So over here, I've already brought in two materials for it. And I'd want to do is come in here and go in here and switch this out there. Now, what's supposed to happen is I'm supposed to be able to do this as an instance. So just one of these will change. This is a powerful, powerful new feature. Again, it's so you can have prefabs, but tweak things in them. Like I could change it and this one should have stayed black and this one, sh well, actually I guess this one should have stayed black and then this one should have switched to blue. That is the new feature in this release. That is the new marquee feature in 23.10. So 
why am I not showing you that new feature? Well, this is where the frustration part comes with O3DE. Every single time I jump into a new release, it doesn't work. I have to smash my head off a wall, find some little config setting somewhere, something along those lines. And this one, I just, I simply cannot get it to work. I'm supposed to be able to enable this. There is a new um, underlying system so people can create their own editors, which we'll get back to in just a second. And there is a new uh, outliner you can install that gives you the ability to, I should be able to drop down right here. So when I'm not in prefab mode, so when I'm in level editing mode like this, I should be able to drop this down and select values and change them for each individual instance. I should also be able to click here and create an instance. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. I'll get back to that in just a second. So what are the exciting new features in 23.10 if you're not into robotics? Well, the big one I just finished talking about there is the ability to do prefab overrides. So you can change details of an object extensible uh, the color of a car, which was my idea here, without having to create a new object. Prefab overrides are pretty darn important, and they are the star new feature of this release. They don't work, <laughs> there is that, but uh, there's also a script canvas for small graph nodes, uh, the document property editor. So this is the underlying thing that allows tool creators to, to use data without having to get into QT and special things. And prefab overrides is built on top of this. It doesn't work either. So uh, that's been my experience so far. So I don't even know if they just shipped the wrong build. I followed all their instructions. I simply can't get it to work. Now there's also the possibility it's user error, but if you know me, I try out a lot of game engines, a lot of game engines. A lot of times I don't have any documentation at all and I can still get them to work. And it just seems like every time I'm working with Lumberyard or O3DE, it just doesn't bloody well work. So might be user error, but this user has a lot of experience with game engines and has a lot of errors when dealing with O3DE slash Lumberyard. We also have some improvements to the graphics in general. Uh, so better memory support for both Vulkan and DirectX, uh, mesh instancing, mobile shader performance improvements, framework for multi GPU support, additional ray trace reflection, uh, sorry, the addition of ray trace reflections. Uh, the other nice thing, I guess I should have mentioned this earlier on, uh, the O3DE project is actually administrated by the Linux Foundation and they ported the entire thing to Linux. So if you're looking for a Linux-based game engine, this one is definitely worth checking out. Uh, but this uh, release includes improved ability to export projects from O3DE and Windows, Linux, Linux Server, and iOS, along with uh, build fixes for all platforms, including Linux, Windows, Linux, and iOS. Um, so recent developments across the industry to change licensing and boost fees for developer has led to increased interest in open source 3D engines like O3DE. So that might be a, a small reference to, I don't know, maybe another game engine out there adding a, I don't know, maybe a runtime fee. And I think O3DE definitely benefited from those changes. So back to the release notes. If you go to the actual release notes linked in the documentation, it's still showing 23.05. So by the way, guys, you might want to update now that you've actually released it. Uh, this is more or less as the same thing. A key thing here is again, that new document property editor, uh, which you actually have to go ahead and enable, which by the way, I followed these instructions completely. And then you've got the new prefab overlines, which again, you have to enable. So these are the new star major, major updates to this release. So you need to get your documentation absolutely right. Uh, so we got other things. We got improvements to the gem system as well. By the way, if you've never encountered gems before, uh, it's a very cool concept. This is the extensibility for uh, O3DE. You can add new gems to your project. Uh, we have some Amazon integration in here, obviously. So, um, you know, the AWS, GameLift, uh, Twitch, and so on. But you've also got other tools in here like adding Python support or a WICE audio in there, uh, white boxing for level design, vegetation support, and so on. So if you want to add gems, they're basically think of them like DLLs or extensions for the game engine. They are all available here in the gems category. Uh, so yeah, that's the crux of it. So let's go here. So the prefab overrides, let's go to the documentation for it because I, for the life of me, can't get it to work. Here are the instructions as you go through. And and you will find that these were not updated uh, for quite a while. And that is a mistake because this is the marquee new feature of your new release and these instructions don't work. So I've gone through everything here. What is supposed to happen is I'm supposed to be able to drop down here and then edit the, the, the sub aspects of my prefab. So you see here, we got this drop down here. Now, if I go back over here, uh, there's my two prefabs and I don't, I don't have those things. So you're supposed to actually create this script, which I did right here. So this enable outliner override management and set that to true. I've done that. It doesn't work. You'll also see this little note here, which is very, very, very confusing and isn't true either. Uh, so starting in 23.05 release prefab override management in entity outliner is enabled by default. So you shouldn't have to do any of this stuff anyways. I think that's what that documentation is telling me. Uh, but again, it's all out of date and it doesn't matter because, hey, it doesn't work. Now, the good news is uh, you can actually come in here so you can see how they're 
you know, these different drop downs. So this one, you can actually add a new uh, component to it. So this guy is a different instance. So this is how it should work. And this should be a super powered feature. So here you can see they've actually added an all new component to this guy. It's got an antenna attached to it. And they've also changed the color of it. So you should just be able to drop down and make new changes to it. You can add new things to the prefab. Uh, you can add new um, entities to the prefab. It, it should be a very powerful feature if it worked. And then even more so, and this goes back to your documentation, you have to have your documentation match your instructions. There's another aspect of it. So for example, here, uh, so you need to turn this on. To make this work, you need to turn on the new DPE. Now DPE, remember, is that new underlying UX extension system here that the new entity inspector is built on. You also need to turn on the entity inspector, et cetera. And those are all run via these console variables. So what I need to do is go in here and find ed underscore enable DPE. So let's go over there. We'll find it. So tools, console, ed underscore enable Oh, it doesn't exist. Now, it seems quite obvious what's happened here. They've, they've broken it out into two new, instead of just being one, the asset editor uh, and the uh, inspector and uh, this guy right here, the outliner, are all separate settings here. The only problem is you've got no way of knowing and the instructions are telling you the wrong bloody thing. And even more importantly, even when I set all these values, close these things and open them back up, it still, it doesn't work. And I'm not going to spend years and years digging into this to figure out why. I'm just going to move on. But again, this is a game engine that has a heck of a lot of potential. It's come a long way. Uh, it is pleasant to work with. As you can see from these Cinti imported assets, it does have a good solid asset importing pipeline. Uh, there is a lot to be excited about with O3DE. At the same time, guys, when you do something like this, when you have a new release, right here, and you have star new features like this, like these, these new features are your two biggest new features. Make sure that your documentation works or make sure that these features work out of the box because I know what I'm doing and I am super frustrated right now. I can't imagine somebody that's just moving over and wants to try this new stuff out, their experience here. And I can only think at this point in time that maybe the build I have is wrong. I, I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know, but this was a massive miss in my opinion. And then again, coming back this quote guys this quote <laughs> this quote is awful get rid of it all right so that's it o3de i know this neg this came across very negative it's because of my my experience this morning was very very frustrating and again it goes that way it's either really exciting or really frustrating the last o3de video i actually think i was pretty much on an uptick for it this one not as much so let me know what you think are you excited about the possibility of o3de have you worked with it and do you find it just as frustrating let me know in the comments down below and i will talk to you all later goodbye